First trip to the Final Four for the Crimson Tide. They beat Clemson 89-82 to in the Elite Eight in Los Angeles. Had to come from behind to do it. They trailed by 13 points in the first half. Nate Oates has absolutely loved the chemistry of this team and found out about his squad. First round of the tournament, he could see what they were all about in that victory over Charleston. Then in the second game against Grand Canyon, it was their defense that led the way and Maybe it was the first time all year that it clicked for them. All of those lessons during the season finally paid off. And I think the key for that team is perimeter defense, Sears in particular, to contain the bounce. It is Ron Groover, Patrick Adams, and Paul Sells, our officiating crew. High and Eagle, Grand Hill right now. And the goes to the enemy. And they're laying off Kessel, testing that deep shot. And for the closed caption person, Bill Raftery said, Alabama goes man to man. <laughs> Castle's jumper in and out. And it's rebounded by Grant Nelson. And right away, Castle for UConn guarding Sears, 6'6, maybe the best perimeter defender for UConn. And this is a tough matchup. Uh, Stroud is so good around the rim and off the bounce. Caravan's got to be careful. Nice time. Oh, they nine human eraser, Donovan Klingon. How about the length, the activity? With the recovery. Yeah, in the right spot. And then Nelson looked like he had a free one there and coming from the weak side clinging. I mean, we saw a game earlier. He had eight blocks against maybe Northwestern. Against Northwestern. Yeah, we thought he probably got gypped out of two. <laughs> Shorted, you might say. Yeah. Respect for the officials. Estrada, give it up. Nelson fires. Cut next on a three. He is a live and well lately, isn't he? Filling that box score. Devils Lake, North Dakota, transfer from North Dakota State. What an addition he's been for Alabama. The three, so they, yeah, they dared him, and Castle and hits from the outside. He looked at the bench and went to Hurley like, okay, it was okay if I <laughs> took that. Well, 26% from the three-point line. But Castle. better lately, better lately, though. Big East freshman of the year gets UConn on the board. Sweeping move doesn't go for Nelson, cleared by Klingon. And the key for this team is the cutting. Spencer, look at the post up, the mismatch now. UConn did trail for 21 seconds here. Maneuvering on the inside. Castle showing off his moves on the interior. And he took advantage of Sears there. Estrada, well-traveled, bounces it on the interior. Pringle on a kickout. Sears had a rough first half and then bounced back in the second half against Clemson. Now Pringle's got to keep active. Griffin, give it, it on the rim. Pringle, oh, that's a rejection by Klingon. Boy, that was an armpit rejection, too. He didn't elevate. Lob it upstairs, and that ball actually bounces off the rim for Newton and over to Spencer. Caravan, ball fit. Caravan, attack mode, and a blocking foul. Now, this year, you're not getting away with that. Plant that foot, uh, they're going to get that block. They was nice down this end, by the way, Grant. Spencer. We'll get to that in a second, but right here, once you plant that foot, you're going to get that call. Uh, Spencer's activity at the other end didn't foul and led him to Clinton. A lot of guys initiate the contact. It's a waste. Well, well that's what's so great. When you have Clinton there, you can funnel everybody to the basket and also guard the three-point line aggressively, which they have to do against the volume-shooting threes of Alabama. Foul was called on Ryland Griffin. Alex Caravan averaging 13 and a half points per game. His versatility inside, outside. And you can basically say that about everybody on the UConn roster. The versatility is what makes them so special. And I love what Dan Hurley said. He said, we didn't become an offensive team until Caravan came here. And obviously they have been the, the most efficient offense in all of college basketball. You saw Clinton show big and recover. They're going over the top. Pringle hands it back. Griffin gets it to Pringle. And normally Pringle would have gone up with that. Nice pass. Again, a kick out now for Nelson. Shot clock is down to two. Griffin fires. Off the rim. Offensive rebound. Estrada. Griffin again. He's not shy. That's a three. He can shoot it. We had that Kentucky game. He didn't make shots, which really hurt them early. 7 6. UConn. Huskies. Seventh appearance in the final four five national titles and watch how busy they are on this end of the floor a lot of cutting screening and giving it to him again he's like oh, and castle snaps in a three and that's he big is. time right there i mean he is a talent young player may not be a yukon for long but certainly you gotta guard that young man 
He has scored eight of UConn's ten points. McDonald's All-American from Covington, Georgia. And blowing up that ball screen, too, with that handoff. Griffin, pull up drop. And it's rebounded by Castle. Get it ahead for Newton. And the knock away. Sears trying to gather out of bounds. Dan Hurley is beside himself. He thought it was off Alabama. You're saying like that's unusual. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should just put that on a recording and we could just play it over and over. Uh, good Great. hands by Estrada here as well as Sears in the right spot. And he might be right. That ball just knocked off the foot of three. And right now, this lineup five out on offense. Five guys that can score, draw, and kick game. Unselfish play. And right now, Alabama finding that offensive rhythm. They are five of seven from downtown. Spencer. Two man game with Castle. Spencer drives in. Little body. Inside. Johnson. Spencer. With the Slamson. Spencer has such a feel. Spencer. 23 20, Alabama. Well, they do spread you out. Individual D and containment essential. Kick threes and then the scramble. Griffin that was pass. too high. He was looking to lead Stevenson to the hoop. Out of bounds. Now, right there, great feel, understanding how to play. A lot of good offense here in this one. Coach Alabama doing what Alabama does. How do you disrupt them offensively? Well, I mean, they're tough to guard. And, and obviously, the transition threes, um, you know, and they just keep attacking. So we got to guard the ball better. We're giving up layups and threes, and, and that's not what we usually do. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Tracy, in addition, Tracy told us during the timeout, there's a wrap on Klingon's right hand. He got elbowed in practice. They are not concerned. Klingon, there's such a difference in this UConn team when he's on the floor and when he's on the bench. Well, you've seen it. I mean, when he was in the game to start, offensively, Alabama out of sorts. But once he went to the bench, Crimson Tide found their groove. In fact, they've made seven of their last eight shots with Klingon watching from the sideline. And now he's back in there for UConn. And Bert, his screening is big on the offensive end as well, and then ducking in. He can go to that hook now if he can get it set up. Clean against Pringle. Nice rhythm. D, huh? Newton comes to the ball. Repost. Klingon disappeared. Yeah. Just too big. Oh, made him disappear. The repost. Powerful. You see that bandage, too. He was the most outstanding player of the East region, Donovan Klingon. And he cuts the Alabama lead to one. Just past the halfway point of this first half. Sears one on one with Spencer. A number of jab steps. Kick. Corner. Estrada rims out on a three ball rebounded by Newton. And that's the key you've got to contain. Nice run this? by the big. Oh, big finish for the big fella. What a find. That oh. hand looked good oh. right there. So much for that injury report. <laughs> How about this look? Big fella banging it home. Get. The student section is delivered by Pizza Hut, the official pizza of March Madness. Now the run out, this is perfection. And Bird, it's just beautiful. Look at the speed of the big guy getting to the rim. And how about the read by Newton? Just incredible. The puppies organized, big time delivery. He is a difference maker. He is, but Rav, come on, poor transition defense right there. You got sometimes we'll have cross matches. You can't let the biggest guy on the floor get an easy two in transition. And we've seen a shift in philosophy from UConn. Last four field goals have been in the paint. They were taking three pointers earlier. Of course, they were forcing Castle to take his. 24-23, Huskies out of the timeout. Estrada hands to Sears. Nice Bounce it. Pringle. Denied. Foul call. Klingon goes down after he got taken out. And Pringle needs a moment. I yeah, hope he's okay. That's Look at this little dive to the rim. What a challenge. And, and that's what you have to do against a shot blocker. Go right at them. Don't try to avoid the contact there. But even the recovery by Klingon, fantastic. It was all set up because they moved them around too. Well, Think about also, it. But well, they set the screen so yeah. high, gave Pringle that running start. Pringle went for the major crunch there. I noticed. 
He had a little chip on his shoulder. A little bit. A little bit. He does have a little toot going, much like yourself. I thought you were going to mention a snack. Right. <laughs> that's, that's where I'm going. I'm hungry. So he gets a little excited because during the year they had to sit him out a little bit here and there. He got a technical during the tournament as well. He was upset out of the call. Yes. But he has been a really good jolt for this team because you could play him at the five spot, play him at the four. He's been in the starting lineup. He's come off the bench. Transferred from Wofford. Good defender. And does a lot of little things, bringing intensity to Nate Oates' squad. And with Nelson out, they're going to need a lift from him and others. And Nelson has not come back after that second foul. Pringle, a 55% shooter. Not moving like he normally would, but trying to play through it. They do a lot of man full and rag you, get you deep in the shot clock, and gets you out of sorts. Alabama challenge a little bit. And, and Raph, right now, it looks like UConn's offense is not as crisp as we've seen during this tournament. And look at this after almost 10 and nothing. Spencer, give it up. Castle looking inside. Why not re roll with him? Playing it. Back out. Repo. Shot clock down to three. Down to three. Hunter Castle goes upstairs for the flush. And that's part of the defensive dilemma we watch Alabama. They had no top guy going down. You just take the cutter at the rim. Griffin, aggressive mindset. And it's intercepted by Spencer. Watch the wing for Caravan. And it's Castle to the rim. He's fouled. Nice cover by Alabama, Caravan though. And UConn, they don't run a lot, but off of turnovers, they'll get out in transition, but great patience there and surveys the floor. You really can't come double team from the bottom side. It has to come from the top there, but Klingon finding the open teammate for two. Now they haven't teased him with any doubles either. You know, to set that little trap on the baseline. Take a short clock right there, let him score. Let him try to score over length. Mm -hmm. Free throws here for Stefan Castle, 76% shooter, multi-dimensional talent. Champions live here on Max Stream Major League Baseball, the NBA playoffs, the Stanley Cup playoffs, and much more. Champions live here on Max, the one to watch for live sports. And Nelson back in there with the two. But in there with Pringle, so I imagine Pringle will stay on Klingon to try to protect Nelson with those two fouls. He's got to be smart now. Castle has been outstanding in this first half. He's got 12 points to lead all scores. Freshman of the year in the Big East, rightfully so. There's multiple guys on UConn that can take over and have big moments throughout a game. 10-2 run for UConn. Estrada, love it up. Nice play by Knock away by Klingon. <laughs> How about backpedaling under control, facing the ball? What a major deterrent. Raph, he's 7'2", 280, able to get out on the screen and roll defense and get back to the roller. Looking like Karch Karai right there with that slam. Cringing just a little bit, maybe that hand. That's your go-to volleyball reference, isn't it? I only know one volleyball. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have a deep bag in the volleyball world. 28-25, UConn, toss it out. The Prince of three. Pringle with a great screen to set him up as well. May have been moving, but got away with it. They are six of nine from long range. The roll by Klingon. Klingon had it rejected on the interior. A good job by Nelson not to foul. Wait for your help to contest on that shot. Estrada looking for an opening. Gets around Newton for a moment. And he out of bounds, stepped out of bounds. Also, oh, it was a foul, a push. Pushed oh, push by did. Tristan Newton. And he's got to be careful. Newton called for the foul. We are tied at 28. First half action. It's been competitive. It's been tight. Winner goes to the national championship game. The NCAA Men's National Semifinals is sponsored by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Marriott Bonvoy. Over 30 hotel brands for every kind of fan. Jeep. There's only one. Anvar, the U.S. Army, be all you can be. Coach, back and forth, what do you want to see down the stretch into this half? Less turnovers. We got to take care of the ball. When we're getting shots, we're scoring. And we can't, we've given way too many easy points. You know, loose balls, the layup in transition, missed rotation on the dunk. Like, they've got too many easy points, and we got too many turnovers right now. Thank you. Yep. 
All right, Tracy, this game is tied at 28, 731 to go in the first half. Alabama has not looked intimidated. They've run their stuff. They're a very confident offensive team, number one in the country in scoring at 90.6 points per game. UConn's point differential in the last two tournaments is plus 23.1. That's number one all time. Well, you can see the difference in Alabama's defense. Danny's still talking to one of the officials. He's upset about that Pringle screen for the open jumper. UConn opponents have shot 32% so far in the tournament. Alabama's at 59% in this first half. Nelson takes it in. Gives it up. Pringle doesn't look. A uh, steal. Castle against Sears. Good foul. Good foul. And Sears gives it up. As there was contact initially, Sears thought he was going to fight through it on the offensive end, loses the ball, and then Castle fouled at the rim. And Raf Castle, his size, 6'5, 6'6, six, six, strong physicality on defense, causing Sears some trouble. And then in transition, can just overpower you in the paint at the rim. And you can see Pringle really not an offensive threat. Sort of hurts them on that end a little bit. So UConn will trigger in with Spencer. And they run some great stuff on the baseline. A silly foul by Sears. Trying to fight over the top of the screen. It looked like they were going to let him play. Sears and Newton were battling it out on the perimeter. And then once Newton went down, that was it. They blew the whistle. He got caught up with his hands right there. Yeah, that's Trying a second foul on Sears to go along with the two on Grant Nelson. And shooting a pair here, one on one. And Nate Oates opting to keep Sears in the game, trusting Sears, his best player, needing him and knowing his value. That is the seventh team foul against Alabama. Five team fouls on UConn. New episode of Impractical Jokers, so special, it airs on two networks. Watch the Impractical Jokers special event next after NCAA coverage on TBS and True TV. Now looking ahead, this is a close game. The Purple people make free throws. 80% Newton missed that one, obviously, but they are tough come crunch time. And Raph, you said it best with Pringle out there. Look at Klingon. He's just in the paint, mucking everything up, playing almost like a free safety on defense. And he should be screening then. That's what he's got to keep active. Estrada against the bigger defender. Caravan. Estrada. Tiffin doesn't go for Nelson. Not to the outside. Transition opportunity. Numbers. Castle for Newton. Steps into the three. Off the rim. Nice rebound, Spencer. What a read. Filled the lane, went to the box. Heads up play. Caravan swings for Klingon. She's got to be careful. UConn has missed its last five three-point attempts. Castle. Strength. He's got muscle, but he couldn't finish. Late whistle. Late whistle indeed, wow. but that streak. <laughs> Take it to the woodshed. Yeah. I don't blame Nate either with the late call. It is Estrada called on the foul. The reaction by Pringle, who was there for the rebound, and now Castle will head to the line. It's almost as if the official was waiting to see if he scored or not mm -hmm. to call that foul in that situation. Obviously, Castle missing right there at the rim. And this will be free throw attempt number 11 and 12 for UConn. Alabama is two out of two. Got to take advantage. 76% free throw shooter. Another one here for Stefan Castle, major recruit. You alluded to it earlier, Grant. We're not sure he's going to be at UConn very long. His dad, Stacy, played at Wake Forest and Central Florida. And Raff, it looks like he's become more patient throughout the season, Castle, getting more and more comfortable with this UConn offense and system. And just a talent. I love him that he plays hard on both ends of the floor. Uh, you know, he's a lot to learn with this team as they keep you active. You're involved in screening, cutting. Dribble drives, dribble handoffs. They've got to get going going to the rim, I think, right now, Alabama. Veteran Diara back in, replacing the freshman Castle. Wexel, one of those guys that can get to the rim. Nelson gives it up. This guy's the best. Oh, a strong rim. rim. Pretty spin. Oh, careless pass. Up for grabs. Fortunate they didn't turn it over. Wexel with five to shoot. Trying to create some shot clock down to two, down to one. Wexel off the mark. Battling underneath, Nelson comes away with it. How about the activity on the offensive glass? Right? Estrada oh. shows it. Couldn't finish it. Ringo got boxed out by Caravan. Wow. What a spit. 
two-point lead for UConn. Under six minutes to go in the first half. Right now, Nelson on Klingon. Two fouls. Newton misses from three-point territory. Popped up in the air. Still up for grabs. I'm not so sure of that Out shot. of bounds, Spencer. Celebrate your favorite Final Four team with officially licensed fan gear from the NCAA shop. For the best selection of team apparel, head to NCAA.com slash shop. And, and Raph, you think they could have got a better yeah. shot selection Too on early. that possession? Too early. Too early. Yeah. And he's usually good at running the show, you know, four triple doubles. Uh, can't fault his judgment. No fast break points for Alabama. They're a team that will play in transition. <laughs> Johnson, do not go in there. Spencer on a kick. Caravan can't hit the three. Well, oh, they're getting some shots. Oh. They run. Taps it over. Diara has it swatted out of bounds. And, and who said that Klingon is the only guy that can block shots right there? Great timing, weak side help. Nelson right there at the rim. And, and then he said good backup. Sunoco last year was the starter. Clinton the sub. They have a nice little defensive scheme with these two. They've missed nice seven straight threes, and now it's eight straight off the mark. Super gets it ahead, and a foul called. That would have been a fast break opportunity. Griffin running the floor. And maybe a smart foul there by Cam Spencer. Prevent Alabama to get out in transition where they thrive. The one concern for UConn this tournament, they've obviously rolled through the competition. They've not shot threes well, and you just don't snap your fingers and all of a sudden solve it. And we always know going into a cavernous venue like this, there's that adjustment period when you're shooting three. And it's surprising. I mean, they're such a great 